Hello, and welcome to another 3D printing tutorial from the Wayland Free Public Library. This will be part one in a multi-part series on 3D printing lithophanes and designing a lithophane lamp. What is a lithophane? Simply put, it's 3D printing an image that reveals itself when you shine a light through it. So as a brief example, we have plain looking lamp, but when you shine that light through, it reveals the kind of 3D printed image. And I'm sure you're wondering, what did that original image look like? It'll look like that. And there's the 3D printed version. And this is a poster from a video game series. So what about an illustration? And what about maybe some actual people? Movie poster, Lord of the Rings. What about photographs? Maybe a nature photograph. Comes out pretty good. And what about all these images on my phone or the camera on my phone? How does that look? Also looks pretty good. This is actually an image I took on my phone. Um, couch didn't come out too great, but the cat looks pretty good. So how do I make my image do that? Well, when you have your image in mind and you have it on your computer, first thing, you're going to want to open up a browser. And you're going to go to this website up here. 3dp.rocks slash lithophane. It will default to this view. And before we import our image, we're just going to change a couple settings. First and most important change up on the settings tab, image settings, make sure negative image, which, is a de which it defaults to, is set to positive image. If you keep it on negative, your lithophane will probably have some nightmare fuel aspect to it. Um, that's really the only setting we want to change on this page. Back to settings, go to model settings. Uh, base stand depth curve, we don't really need to worry about these at the moment. We're kind of just printing a flat lithophane. Uh, vectors per pixel, make sure this is set to 5. You can highlight the numbers here to type in what you want. Uh, thinnest layer, we're going to set this to the nozzle diameter of our printer, which is 0 0.4. Border, uh, it is usually a good idea to have a little bit of a border around your lithophane. I find two millimeters works pretty well. As for thickness, uh, this can have some variance, but nine times out of 10, I find 2.8 works very well. And maximum size, this defaults to 100, which is actually pretty small. Um, 125. I find is a good all around number for lithophanes. Uh, if you really want to like squeeze all the detail you can, you know, the bigger the better is kind of the general rule of thumb. So you can put it up to 135, maybe 140, um, maybe even 150, but kind of 150 and above. Uh, this doesn't really matter if you have your own printer, but if you're submitting it to the library, 150 and above may exceed the time limits we have on our printers. So just keep that in mind. Set that back to 125. And that's pretty much it for tweaking basic settings. So we can go over to images, choose file, and just you know, find the image on your computer. I'm going to do the Lord of the Rings poster. So select, open, it will automatically come in. 
And then all you need to do is hit download. Downloads towards the bottom there. And you can, you know, if you have your own printer at home, you can just put that right in your slicer and print away. Or you can email it to the library and we will print it out for you. And if you're at all curious about what these settings actually do, uh, feel free to stick around. I'll go over them a little bit. Uh, otherwise, feel free to skip ahead towards the end of the video for a preview of part two. For those of you still watching, uh, admittedly, base slash span depth, I haven't really played around with it all myself, so I'm not really sure what it does. Uh, curve is a very important setting if you want to make like circular lampshades. Uh, the lamp that was shown at the beginning of this video had a 360 curve to it. Um, vectors per pixel is also important. You really don't want to go below 5. Um, anything beyond 5 though won't really have much of an effect. Um, you know, this setting is basically how much detail the STL file is going to, you know, pull from the original image. Um, really, anything beyond five FDM printers aren't really going to be able to adequately capture. Um, I think if you have a resin printer at home, you could, you know, jack this way up and get a really highly detailed breathtaking lithophane, but if all you have is an FDM printer or you're submitting to the library, there's really no need to go above five. Um, other than that, really the most important settings are thinnest layer and thickness. Uh, maximum size as well, but like I said earlier, pretty much anything between 125 and 150 will give you a good size list of fame that won't exceed the time limit. But what do thickness and thinnest layer do exactly? How do they affect the lithophane? Uh, let's go back to the Lord of the Rings example here. Uh, so this was done at 3.2 thickness and 0.4 thinnest layer with a maximum size of 150. Um, so what happens if we change the settings up a bit? dramatically decrease the thickness. Um, as you can see, when it becomes thinner, it kind of becomes much clearer. You know, you can see everybody and everything that's going on, but you do pretty much lose almost all of the contrast that's in the original image. Um, you know, you can see the sky is way more striking and detailed in the thicker lithophane. You know, Frodo holding holding the light of Elendil looks significantly better. Um, the trade-off, of course, of making it thicker is the darker areas become much more obscured. You know, so if you compare kind of the the bottom half of each lithophane, you know, it comes in much better at 2.4 than it does at 3.2. So general rule of thumb with thickness is, you know, the thicker you make it, the more contrast you get, but the more obscure the dark air, darker areas of your photo will become. Um, if we change these up again, and I will change the thinnest and thickness um, in smaller increments. Um, so the changes are pretty subtle, but I think the absolute brightest areas are just a little bit brighter at 0.4 compared to 0.8 and the darker areas are just a bit darker at 3.6 compared to 3.2 and if you really increase the thickness you kind of become unable to see much at all um, i think the only reason you'd ever want to print a lithophane at more than like three and a half or 3.6 millimeters would be if it was 
you know, really washed out, you know, it was a bright sunny day and you left the flash on. Um, but other than that, I think 3.2 or 2.8 um, are pretty safe and reliable settings. So if you're really looking to adjust these settings for the best possible result, just remember the thicker you make it, the more contrast you get, the more you lose the darker areas. The thinner you make it, the more you see the darker areas, but the more contrast you lose. And the more you increase the thinnest layer, the kind of less brighter the brightest areas of the photo will be. That is far from eloquent, but I think we all get the idea. Anyhow, what lies ahead for part two? Well, let's go back to the image of my cat that I took with my phone. A zoom in of the lamp there and a big zoom in on the actual lithophane. And there it is kind of taken apart towards the bottom. Uh, that is more or less what we're gonna be making. Uh, now this is you know, a vertical image taken with a phone. So if you have a horizontal one or you're, you know, trying to print a big movie poster or desktop wallpaper, you know, your the body of your lamp is going to look slightly different. Like this is about six inches tall. So if you have a horizontal photo, it's probably going to be, you know, six or seven lengthwise. Um, but it's more or less going to look like that with the lamp coming through the top there. It's like a hanging lamp socket. We're basically going to be hanging it down from the lid. We will be using Tinkercad.com to make the uh, lamp and lid. I also want to point out that I only have one lithophane inserted here, but depending on your design, you can have anywhere from two to four additional kind of lithophane inserts throughout the lamp body. Uh, I will say though that if you're planning or hoping to have kind of multiple lithophanes in your lamp, try and keep their format uniform. Uh, things get very tricky if you have, you know, one vertical photo and two horizontal photos. Um, highly, highly recommend you keep them all vertical or all horizontal. If by any chance you're thinking back to the beginning of the video and thinking, hey, that really big lamp that you showed earlier, I want to know how to make that, um, this is not something you will be able to make at the library. I printed this at home. Uh, the lampshade at the top there took around 30 hours to print, so that greatly exceeds the time limit of the library's 3D printers. Um, if you have a printer at home and you're, you know, dying to know how I made this, leave a comment to the video. If I see enough of them, I'll make another video, you know, going over this design. Anywho, Lithophanes Part 2, Tinkercad.com. Stay tuned, it's coming out in the not-so-distant future.